Um, we'll call the meeting to order. This is the Tuesday, September 2nd meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Wintrow. Here. Askland. Yep. Sims. Here. Ausch. Here. McQueen. Here. Also present is Village Manager Patty Bates. Thank you. And we have a special guest here, um, our very own uh, Carl Colon, who is the director of the Greene County Public Libraries and happens to be a Yellow Springs resident. So we're always happy to see Carl. Thank you very much. Um, just wanted to come in and share with you a little bit tonight uh, about issue two, which is the library levy that will be coming on the ballot uh, on November 4. From our kids to our seniors, the Greene County Public Library brings incredible services to everyone in Greene County. Our patrons can use over 75 million items, a mere 20 million items more than the New York Public Library, through our partnerships with public and university libraries across the state of Ohio. We provide internet access and public computers to help people find jobs, access data, and do schoolwork. Each year, tens of thousands of children use our libraries for reading programs in school. Through our Dolly Parton Imagination Library Project, over 20,000 books have been sent out to Greene County children under the age of five in the last eight months to promote early literacy. The library provides book delivery service to homebound, elderly, and disabled residents. Last year, the Yellow Springs Community Library circulated 204,000 items. That's 58 books for each person in the village. Recently, hundreds of residents across Greene County shared personal stories that demonstrate how public libraries add to our community. You can see these stories at www.thankfulforlibraries.com. Community support is vital to continue these programs. The library and these valuable programs, materials, and services are supported in part by a voter-approved countywide tax levy. In fact, this levy is more than half a library's budget, and without it, the library would have to cut staff, close locations, and reduce hours. Since 2008, state funding to the library has been cut by over six million dollars and we anticipate state funding will fall by another 20 percent over the next 10 years now the library has worked hard to trim costs and we have not asked residents for additional money in 10 years but community support means success for our students service to seniors and access for all to continue to offer the books and programs to continue to help children learn to read and succeed in school, to keep our materials up to date and maintain our services and staffing, the library board has asked the community to consider modestly increasing its local support this November. Uh, issue two is a renewal of our existing one mill levy uh, and a request for a small increase of nine tenths of a mill. The cost of property owners of this levy would be about $2.60 more a month for a $100,000 home. Now we are always careful to make sure the community is informed about what is happening in the library. And we are going to levy at the earliest possible opportunity to make sure that the community can carefully consider its choice. Because of that, the levy won't actually go into effect until the current levy expires at the end of 2015. This is the kind of long-range planning approach that the community expects from us. And we are honored and humbled that groups from the Dayton Area Board of Realtors, Fairborn and Xenia Chambers of Commerce, and Greene County Health Coalition have chosen to endorse our levy because of our decades-long record of responsible service to our community. If you have questions, I've given you all uh, a handout that has factual information. Uh, you can go by our website, www.stronglibraries.com, to learn more about the levy. Or you can drop by the library's website and email me from there. That's all I have. If you have any questions for me, I would be delighted to answer them. And uh, mostly, I want to thank you for this opportunity again to share this information. Thanks, Carl. If you would just leave the extra flyers, if you don't mind. Um, Judy could probably. I don't mind a bit. Good. <laughs> well, I think um, how, how this community feels about our library is, is, pretty, is pretty well known. And um, I will say that I actually have served um, on the library levy committee. And so it's great to work with other people in Greene County and to see that it's not just in Yellow Springs, Greene County Library, a great group of folks who have been supporting the library levy and the library. So um, I think this uh, levy probably bodes, hopefully things bode well for the levy. It is, uh, I mean, we all know that all the local government funds have been cut and everybody's trying to make do, but we're all also looking at, at, at levies and additional revenue sources. So um, it's understandable that the library was, was forced into this situation, so. Well, I appreciate that. Enforced is exactly the right word. We've waited as long as we can. We're in a situation now where we are using reserve funds to operate the library. Mm -hmm. And so we're not trying to 
be all scary or anything, but just to be very honest with the community about the situation in which we find ourselves and how we think we can do the planning for the future so that each new decision in Columbus doesn't leave us coming back to our voters saying, oh my God, we're going to die. We're trying to make the plans once, we're trying to make them right, and we're, hope we're trying to make them last. Great. Thank you. Well, I would just like to say that I don't, I can't think of a re community resource that's more important than a library, really. Thank you. Because it's available to everyone in the community. And as you note, I mean, it reaches out so far. So. Thank you very much. We, we, we are honored to be able to serve the entire range of our community. It's a, it's a very special privilege that we enjoy, and we're glad that, um, that Yellow Springs has supported us so well. We're, we're very grateful to all of Greene County. Uh, it's part of why we, uh, Green County was named by the Smithsonian Institution one of the 20 smartest communities in America mm -hmm. because our per capita public library use uh, is the highest, uh, uh, in the 20 highest in the country for communities of over 100,000. And just for explanation, um, council as a rule has not endorsed levies um, from other other of course. groups, so um, we w we won't be doing that. I you know I mean perhaps I, I will obviously I mean I'm obviously supportive. I think Marianne. I think you know individually I'm guessing that you have a very supportive group here. I appreciate that. If you'd like to know more, of course, you can drop by and learn more about the levy on Facebook. You can learn uh, about it at the library's website. And then there is a levy campaign uh, website as well, which is called uh, keepourlibrarystrong.com. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Any other announcements? Uh, yeah, I have a few. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to, uh, again, thank all of our block party hosts. We've had quite a few happen during this month. A few more are going to occur, and it's been really great. We've worked out a few kinks, which is also good for next year, and that's really exciting. Um, and then just a few uh, dates I wanted to highlight. Again, this Thursday, September 4th, the Human Relations Commission meeting. We will have Chief Pettiford and uh, Patty Bates there to discuss our community policing forum. Uh, we welcome all citizens to participate in that. Um, the Arts Council ha is having their art house hop this Saturday uh, from 1 to 4. That's a really cool event. Uh, locals open up their homes to see their arts collections. And so I just wanted to give a shout out to them. And then I wanted to mention that next Wednesday, the 10th, uh, the Public Art Commission meeting. Again, we will be reviewing the street musician uh, agreement, and we hope that we have uh, local buskers and anyone else that wants to participate in that discussion, 7 p.m. in the arts room. And I just want to, because I've heard people comment, I just want to absolutely clarify that the, the HRC meeting is not the public forum right, about the police department. <laughs> it is simply a planning meeting right. to plan the public forum and to schedule it so um, there won't be, and, and Chief Pettiford won't be there to discuss issues. He'll be there to discuss the forum and the planning of the forum. Yep. And I have an announcement. <coughs> uh, I'd like to thank the council plus uh, all the citizens uh, for the support uh, that they gave me uh, during the death of my mother and so forth and the donation that you made. Uh, I forgot that uh, yesterday was a holiday and my sisters came down. They wanted to, to be here in person, but they, they had to leave this morning, but they planned on coming back. So I oh, had nice. a future council meeting. And oh, so good. Forth. But we, we all were, are very appreciative, appreciated of, of the the warmness of, of the community. And it's nice to, I, I grew up in a small community and it's nice to have lived in a small community because it seems like small communities are more considerate and, 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 and more sincere when, when they pass on their, their feelings and so forth when you, when you have a loss of a loved one. So again, the family and myself are, are very appreciated of it. Thanks, Jerry. Um, I, I just wondered whether Patty might want to announce the award, or do you, you want to wait until you? It, it's in my, you mean Joe's award? Yeah, it's in my uh, report, so we'll just do it then. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, anything Thank else? You. So we will move on to our loads of minutes. <laughs> uh, 
First, the minutes of August 4th, regular meeting, page one, page two, page three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, now on to August 18th, uh, page one. Two. Yes, I, I have, it's a question, I guess. I, the, the minute state about a little over halfway down that uh, council has decided, oh, that there will not be an officer involved in SWAT until further discussion. Is that, I guess when I first read it, I thought, that it was saying that we would not be involved in SWAT. I guess I'd like just like a distinction. Do we have a distinction? I, I, what I said is that I didn't want, I didn't believe that it was a good idea to have another officer in SWAT until we were able to discuss the, the, to have a public forum and discuss the issue as a whole. I didn't feel, I didn't know if council was ready to say and we can't do that in minutes. So, it, I mean, that's what I believed I said, is that we will not have another officer in SWAT until it's able to be discussed as a broader issue. So and is, we get, is that a decision that was made by council? I, I asked Patty to do that. I think I stated that to Patty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think council was in agreement. Yeah, I don't know that we took a formal vote, but... Okay. Um, since, I mean, I think because it had become clear that we didn't really, we, we didn't feel as informed about it and our participation, that we felt like we needed to at least have the discussion publicly so that we could make the decision in public. Although I'm also realizing that actually I think that that actual discussion where SWAT was, was brought up separately the first time may have happened at the fourth. And that's when I made that, that's when I made the initial request to Patty that we not add another officer to SWAT until we had a broader discussion. In these minutes, I was responding to a citizen concern um, that where there was the discussion of SWAT, and I just reiterated that that's what had been decided at the previous meeting. Mm -hmm. So this wasn't a new decision, this was just a reiteration. Okay, the, the minutes of that previous meeting don't reflect that. At least as far as Do I you remember if it was the previous meeting or was it the meeting even before that? I, I'm Judy. not sure. And I, I'm, it's not about the decision, it's just clarifying mm -hmm. if we made a decision and what that decision was or how it was made. <clears throat> um, I mean, it's not uh, crystal clear, but you do say, um, had he clarified the involvement that by a former officer that there wasn't currently an officer serving and then Winter says well, the that the discussion will take place in the next several month, months um, that could be clarified I guess to say I mean I can go back through and see if you actually said you know, Patty let's not put an officer on until the discussion takes place I, I, because I I mean, I know that that happened at some point. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it was in the previous meeting. It was in the, the August 4th meeting that in the citizens' concerns that that discussion mm -hmm. took place. Mm -hmm. um, so, so given that that seems to be the agreement, does that mean that we've sort of suspended our involvement but we haven't left? I think we should say? have this discussion during a regular session. I mean, I okay, we can't yeah. really. Well, and, and it's also, I mean, it, if you know what you're looking at, which and I, I mean, I'll take responsibility that it's not crystal clear. But what what Patty says is that it's a budgetary decision. I mean, there are dues that you pay. It's not time yet to decide whether or not mm -hmm. we're paying dues for SWAT for 2015. So, it, and that sort of not made crystal clear that 
the discussion will be about whether or not Yellow Springs participates in any way in SWAT for 2015. I'm getting that that's exactly what you meant when you said it's a budgetary decision and well yeah what I what I meant when I said it was a budgetary decision is that we do receive funds for being part of SWAT but that can be part of the budget discussion if council chooses this year we do not currently have anybody in SWAT I'm not sure that we pay dues we, you know what you're right yeah that's I'm sorry I'm, I'm um, yeah. confusing it with the task force so um, yeah. we do not I currently have someone in SWAT <laughs> and when council is discussing the budget they can take into consideration what we may or may not realize as you know money coming in from being part of that but at this point we don't have anybody in SWAT Okay. So do you want, are you contesting the minutes? That's my question. Are you? I was trying to understand the minutes and what, what they, whether we are, whether we all have the same understanding of the minutes and, and of whatever decision was made. So my understanding, regardless of what the minute it is, that we don't have an officer and we're not going to have one until. Until council, council. makes a decision. Okay. Page three. Page four. Oh, I have one comment. Under the new business to Council Land Trust proposal, uh, where it says Krista presented the proposal uh, that addresses the Yellow Springs Creek area, I thought it might clarify it, and maybe this is inappropriate, but to clarify it that the Bryan Center property that we're talking about, because it doesn't say that anywhere in minutes yeah I, I think that would be a good idea um, just to the north of the Bryan Center mm -hmm. page five page six page seven and page eight Can I have a motion for approval so moved. second okay. all those in favor signify by saying aye Aye. I should have said approval as amended. Okay, next um, is a review of the agenda, and um, there were a couple of, um, there was one resolution was added. Um, Patty can explain that when we get to it. It, it uh, is a reiteration of um, the something from last last meeting. And then there are amended resolutions 2014-44 and 2014-22 at the table. So if you would all take a look at those. Um, is there anything else we want to add to the agenda or change in the agenda? And if you do note, we do have an executive session this evening. Anything? Okay. Uh, Lori, um, did you get a chance to? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we had, uh, and we have it here also, uh, flyers from the Ohio Municipal League about um, their annual conference and about um, the ability of council people to participate in that. It's a part of uh, ongoing education for council people, and it is in October. Or early October um, and I don't know if new council people are aware that there are there are we do have a sort of a line item in the budget for travel to conferences like this if we if council members are interested to now this particular conference I thought is it just for clerks or no no it's sent to the clerks but it's actually for uh, yeah. council when I read it it looked okay Um, and then we had a, a letter or an email from Kate Hamilton and it was her Yellow Springs News letter to the editor from a couple weeks back raising questions and concerns about policing philosophy and our participation in SWAT and we had a letter from Paul Abendroth um, regarding Millo Feller pay and he helpfully explained that because of a decision made years ago by council regarding the handling of overhead costs 
the two mill fellows that we now employ earn a little less than those employed by other village nonprofits, and he requests council absorb uh, the overhead cost, so or at least reconsider it, so that we um, are so we're processing the pay for them and make their remuneration equal to other mill fellows. And I have a request that we either put that on the agenda for this meeting or next meeting. We'll, we'll, we'll actually have to discuss it tonight, um, and we can do that during my report if you okay. want, because Great. I need to sign the agreements and get them back to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, the clerk of council, Judy, included the referendum ballot language, um, and uh, the referendum petition drive was successful. And so we have the language that's included in our packets. So you can look at exactly what will be on the ballot this fall. Um, and it's basically going to, though, ask residents to vote yes if they want the village to fund the CB infrastructure and vote no if they do not want, wish the village to fund this at this time. Thank you. Um, Judy, Could I think I asked you to do this before, but um, is there an ability for multiple I mean I see a few of these workshops OML workshops that I'd like to go to but I certainly don't want to sit there for two days or three days whatever it is and there's a lot I'm not that interested in is there a way for us to kind of tag team there well one thing is you can do just one days I saw that there's a fee for each of the fee days day. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think you can tag team. Yeah, I don't no. think you can kind of dip in and out, <laughs> unless you had like a wig. <laughs> although, although there, you do, if, you, if three people are going, you get a fourth free. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, oh boy. So, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I I think that if Karen's interested and maybe Brian, it I'm, sounds like, and Mary Ann, um, you know, it, right there are three. We could have a fourth person go for free if it, you know, either Lori or Jerry would like to go, or you know, there are a couple things I. Could attend, or maybe mm -hmm. even Jason. I saw a couple things that I thought. Should Jason we communicate would. with you, do you directly with you? Do you think? Or yeah, I'll do it. So Judy does. Okay. Oh, I, yeah. Or yeah, one, or of, one uh, of the, yeah, either one of us. We're in constant contact during the day. Anyway. <laughs> now, Judy, were you planning to go? Not probably not. Okay. I will probably wait and do the the clerk thing. Although some of the sessions look. Yeah, I thought there were quite good. Quite a few that would be relevant. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you're interested in going, just get with one of us and we'll register. Okay. Um, let's move on to public, public hearings and legislation. Um, the first is Ordinance 2014-21, declaring one block of Hyde Road and Quarry Street west of Glen Street, no parking. Yes, whereas it has come to the attention of the Yellow Springs Police Department that there is a need to prohibit parking on the west side of Corey Street between Glen Street and Beatty Hughes Park to ensure the safety of pedestrians, and where it is, whereas it has likewise come to the attention of the Yellow Springs Police Department that there is a need to prohibit parking in the last block of Hyde Road, house numbers 1029, 1490, and 1495, nearest the covered bridge, now, therefore, the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby ordains that, section 1, to amend the following section to read. And this is section 452.14 M and N prohibited parking areas. M parking should be prohibited on the west side of Quarry Street from Glen Street north to Beatty Hughes Park. N parking should be prohibited in the last block of Hyde Road at house numbers 1029, 1490, and 1495. Section 2 this ordinance shall be in effect in full force at the earliest date provided by law. Thank you. Can I get a motion? I so move. Second. Um, Patty, I will let you explain this. Is this mm -hmm. came up about primarily because um, <coughs> so many people have decided that they want to park down near the covered bridge see the bridge and then access the hike bike trail and so they're parking um, down in the areas and, and causing traffic issues and, and the homeowners are having issues and um, so that generally has brought about the request that we make it no parking and it's not enforceable right now because there's there are no signs and it's not declared no parking. Mm -hmm. And then the other the the quarry area. Uh, that was the same thing for access to the hike bike trail in another section. Right, and a homeowner has also graveled an area that looks a lot like parking to people who are looking for parking, and mm -hmm. but it's not really it's not parking. And at a lot of festivals, I know people have been parking there and. So these, 
they aren't safety issues so much as just well some of public them are, some of them are safety issues because if they're parking on the street there they're actually blocking the view when people are trying to pull in and out of their driveways and, and mm. creating that kind of issue and I think at one point there's a there's a if they park there it creates kind of a bottleneck to get traffic through as well yeah I mean I think there needs to be a justifiable reason because we're gonna have a lot of citizens saying we want the area in front of my house to be no parking that's that's <laughs> my concern exactly I, I mean I'm I'm not as concerned about the area down at the on Hyde Road as I am about the Cory Street because and I apologize but I read this I was thinking it was the Glen side of Cory I'm really surprised to hear that it's the street that the, the west side of Cory mm -hmm. um, part of it is right across from the fire station I mean I, I know that's where I heard one concern was that some of the parking is happening right when they're where they're pulling out correct that's where the quarry street is. so that I mean I, I think we I would like to have a better sense of exact is it that whole I mean Betty is, Hughes Park is it all along Betty Hughes Park is it can we just before Betty Hughes I, it was just very vague to me to understand exactly where we were prohibiting and I think it's up to B Betty Hughes Park and I, I actually, I don't think that there's parking permitted the whole length of Cory Street. I don't think but there is either, but. Except in front of the Children's Center in, in specific spots, but people, because this is the next block up from the Children's Center, I think there's this assumption that they can keep parking. And, he's, and the homeowner has graveled it. Right. Which makes it look like a parking, a public parking area. But it's the public street. It is a public street. I mean, I'll tell you when Jason asked me about these he said he said the the Hyde Park or the Hyde Road issue is lots clearer it was in fact part of a discussion with homeowners when the covered bridge was being put mm -hmm. in um, so that if you wanted to amend this to remove the second the um, Cory Street section and deal with that at a later time he was not gonna have heartburn about that because that was less of a that was less clear to him as well <coughs> um, we could sort of gather more information <coughs> about that one right and he did also say to me that um, there had been a verbal agreement with the homeowners down on Hyde not to allow the parking there because of the issues that it would cause now who made that verbal agreement you know mm -hmm. whether that was something that council had supported I don't know well, we've never this is the first that's come to our attention mm -hmm. and um, it, it feels like it would be helpful to have just a little more information about it do you want to do you want to table it let's and, table and then it. I can bring uh, maybe a sketch a diagram yeah. a sketch that, and then that would be good and, and it would also be good it, you know for the quarry Street if we could hear if we could get a statement from the fire department I mean certainly if there are issues related to, to fire trucks that would certainly right be attributable to this maybe also the police department for both of those places I mean are there safety issues mm -hmm. right yeah well I know because they've talked I think this is uh, Betty Kelly and Wayne Goulden that I mean I, I have talked know. to the police so yeah I don't know specific names. right I mean yeah I mean a lot of people don't like to have parking in front of their house but if unless it's a safety issue there's a sense that you know there you know or if the street literally is not wide enough to accommodate or it makes things dangerous then obviously you don't have parking there but typically homeowners can't just say I just would prefer if people didn't park in front of my house right we wouldn't be having that all over town and, yeah, and at nobody some point if we don't have <laughs> justification um, yeah okay thanks and it may very well be it may very well be a safety issue and, and very clear I just want to make sure that we're making that clear as we do the legislation okay so do you we need, we need a do we need a motion to table since you haven't I'm can I did we have a motion have I, a motion. there was a motion oh, you okay. did yep um, you did. then I move to table second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. Uh, next is ordinance 2014 22 approving a one-time waiver of water and sewer fees as part of Antioch College Wellness Center preparation and declaring an emergency okay and this is uh, slightly amended from the version some folks had out on the table uh, the dollar amount has changed very slightly 
Whereas the Village of Yellow Springs has received a request from the facilities manager at Antioch College for a one-time waiver of water and sewer fees related to the initial filling of the pool at the Antioch College Wellness Center facility, and whereas the Wellness Center will be open for both public and Antioch College student and staff use, and whereas it is beneficial for the health and welfare of our citizens for the Wellness Center to be available for their use at the lowest cost possible. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, that Section 1, this Council does hereby waive one time the fees for water and sewer to fill the pool at the Wellness Center. This represents an amount equal to $1,669.20 in value and savings to the College on this project. Section 2, this ordinance is hereby declared to be an emergency measure necessary to expedite a project that will benefit the public health and shall take effect immediately upon passage. Thank you. Can I have a motion? I move. Second. Okay. Um, this, um, this was, I, I had talked to folks at the college about this. It seems that, um, we have been looking for ways, um, to promote economic development. I consider this economic development and one of the ways I think we can do it, um, effectively for us, more cost effectively for us is by using our utilities and our enterprise funds. and. Um, it seemed to me that, you know, first of all, the sewer, we've talked about pools, you know, when, you, when you're, there will not be water, um, or there will not be any sewer usage for that. So essentially what we're waiving, although we, I don't believe we have, um, I don't believe our ordinance allows us to waive sewer fees for swimming pools. But in this situation, I mean, this, we're looking at this as an economic development um, tool and support for the college, support for the wellness center. Um, as they're working on their fundraising for the for the center okay. and it is an emergency because we felt it was um, it would be nice to be in effect um, for their opening on um, Saturday and, and if you don't they'll have to pay that bill right that's a good that's <laughs> an even better out. reason that's an even better we don't want them to have to pay late fees oh. um, okay um, it is this since this is a an emergency ordinance um, we will have a public hearing any comments from public sure. you have to come up mr. Yeah. von Matheson you have yeah. to come up to the front yeah um, hi folks <laughs> um, you have to tell us who you are I'm Walter von Matheson and I um, showed up on the campus of Antioch College about 52 or 53 years ago um, 1961. I think that this uh, Wellness Center project is a fabulous example of uh, the college and the community collaborating together. Um, and uh, so we have reached out to a lot of different uh, folks in the community asking for their support in different organizations like the Community Foundation and you folks. But um, the real person that needs to come up here and say a few words is the person that has the great passion. So, Monica. Hi, everybody. Monica. I think I know all of you. Monica Hasek, and welcome, Patty. Thank you. Um, the director of the Wellness Center. And as you know, that this is uh, we're on the the home stretch of the Wellness Center opening and it's been just a really exciting uh, road so far and we know that there's a lot of expectations from the community as well as the college for this to be an absolutely incredible facility for all of us to use and I know some of you have been in to see it and it is incredible and um, we would love your support in this way and love to be able to recognize the village on um, Saturday at our grand opening thank you thanks Monica and, thanks Monica any other comments? Seeing and hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Judy, would you please call the vote? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Askland? Yep. Housh? Yes. Winter? Yes. Uh, next, we have resolution 2014-42 proclaiming Saturday, September 6th. We're not done yet, Malta. <laughs> We're not done yet. Yeah. Proclaiming Saturday, September 6th, 2014 is Antioch College Wellness Center Day in the Village of Yellow Springs. <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a lot to read. It's not happening. Lots of whereases. Yeah, lots of whereases. Do you have it? Yeah, I do. Oh, I kind of. 
it's the oh, I, I, no, I, have the, oh, okay. I have the readable copy actually whereas village council desires to recognize the long history and deep significance of Antioch College to the village of Yellow Springs and whereas village council wishes to congratulate Antioch College on many significant improvements to the grounds and facilities of the Antioch College campus many completed using lead principles and with a commitment to global sustainability thereby restoring campus for the enrichment and enjoyment of students faculty visitors as well as the entire community and whereas because of Antioch College and the Wellness Center life in the village promises to be richer and more enjoyable enabling citizens to access a wide variety of health and wellness services as well as a venue for community events and whereas Village Council celebrates the grand opening of the newly renovated Wellness Center conceptualized as a focal point for town gown interactions and containing a fully equipped fitness center racquetball courts multi-purpose studio spaces a regulation sized indoor swimming pool multi-use space and indoor basketball courts and whereas Village Council desires to re recognize the dedication and excellent work performed by Antioch College's faculty administration students alumni and volunteers now therefore be it resolved by the council of the village of yellow springs ohio that section one that saturday september 6 2014 is hereby declared to be antioch college wellness center day in the village of yellow springs ohio section two this resolution shall go into effect at the earliest period allowed by law thank you can i have a motion so moved second um, I'd say it's pretty self-explanatory. We're all really excited. I hope a lot of us will be there on Saturday. And uh, um, I've seen the place, and it is absolutely beautiful. I like, love the new furniture, saw the new furniture in the lobby. That's great. Any other comments, Council? Yeah, I just can't wait to get my membership. So. <laughs> I think it's kind of fun that Judy just read that because I think the first time I met Judy was going in and using the old curl gym facilities um, many times seeing her behind the uh, behind yep. the counter there keeping yep. keeping watch over uh, <laughs> a much a, a very vulnerable little space and keeping it yes. running yes. so yes. Uh, I see a little bit of a tribute to her work too. Yes, thank you. And I'm sure everybody knows, but the uh, the events from 12 to 4, the ribbon cutting will be at noon. So can't wait. Great. Um, we need to take a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You can go now if you want. <laughs> you can stay though, Malta. Um, Resolution 2014-43, authorizing the village manor manager to enter into agreement with Mercer Group for Gaunt Park field improvements. Okay, whereas the village is interested in making improvements to the ball fields at Gaunt Park, and whereas it is in the interest of the citizens of Yellow Springs to make such improvements, and whereas the village has caused specifications to be written and advertised for bids for the above work, all bid is a single project, and whereas after distributing said bid specifications to all interested parties and having received one bid, an apparent lowest and best bid has been identified. Now, therefore, the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, does hereby resolve that. Section 1, the bid for making said improvements to the ball fields at Gaunt Park is hereby awarded to Mercer, the Mercer Group Incorporated of Troy, Ohio. Section 2, the amount of the Mercer Group Incorporated bid is $24,989. Section 3, the Village Manager is hereby authorized and directed to enter into a contract to construct the improvements as designed with Mercer Group Incorporated. Thank you. Can I get a, get a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Patty? Uh, this is one of the three projects that we put um, RFPs out on. We opened the bids last Friday. We received only one bid on the Gaunt Park ball field improvements, and that was the Mercer mm -hmm. Group. So uh, their bid did include all of the specifications and improvements that we wanted to make. Can you remind us what those best, what, what the general tenor of them was? Because honestly, I, I would have had to go back to the budget. To <coughs> they will be. Um, edging out the ball fields uh, they will be putting an overlay of sand on it because right now it's it's very hard to play on so they'll be putting an overlay of sand on it um, and doing some improvements around the backstop area <coughs> that <coughs> excuse me have to do with <coughs> um, not only clearing it out but um, improving the structures a little bit um, to make them a little bit stronger it's primarily the fields themselves and the overlay of the uh, the sand on it to make it a more playable surface it, and maintain it it's to improve the drainage I mean that's the biggest problem is that is that those they just hold there there are holes that just holds water the pitcher's mound is a problem it's probably not 
the, it's probably not regulation. Now, are they going to do all three fields? Are they going to get the all little all minor all league field too? All three fields. Okay. And I, I noticed I was by there yesterday, and I saw that the softball field has completely grassed over. I mean, there is no intent to do any grass infields, is no, there? Oh, no, no. In fact, um, we did have a request <laughs> to do that um, on the little league field. We did bid it out as an option, but we did not accept the option. Um, and we're not going to do any grass infields. It's and just too is, hard to maintain. It's too hard to maintain, and and honestly, I mean, I, I, I understand why they would prefer it for um, for little leaguers, but adult ball players don't want to play on a grass infield anyway. And it reduces the flexibility of the it field does. because you're you're pretty much you're locked, in. you're locked into a particular size, so it couldn't be used for for um, softball or other things. Correct. So, Correct. Um, it's I mean I understand. Yeah, they. Balls in the face aren't any fun, but um, okay. Um, any other comments or questions? Comments or questions from citizens? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, next is resolution 2014 44, authorizing the village manager to enter into an agreement with Durst Brothers Excavating for streetscape projects for 2014. Okay, whereas the village is interested in making improvements to the area along Xenia Avenue from Dino's Cafe to Glen Street, and whereas it is in the interest of the citizens of Yellow Springs to make such improvements, and whereas the village has caused specifications to be written and advertised for bids for the above work, all bid is a single project. And whereas after distributing said bid specs to all interested parties and having received two bids, an apparent lowest and best bid has been identified. Now, therefore, the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, does hereby resolve that. Section 1, the bid for making said improvements to the Xenia Avenue streetscape is hereby awarded to the Durst Brothers Excavating of Tip City, Ohio. Section 2, the amount of the Durst Brothers Excavating bid is $79,310. Section 3, the village manager is hereby authorized and directed to enter into a contract to construct the improvements as designed with Durst Brothers Excavating. Thank you. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Patty? Uh, we did receive two bids uh, for this project. One was Durst Brothers at the uh, $79,000 bid. The other was from CNS Concrete Services at $125,000. Um, and that was just a difference in quantity uh, prices. So um, obviously Durst is the lowest and best on this one. Um, and how does that compare with what we budgeted? I believe the budget was 150. I think the budget was significantly below what the budget was. Okay. Um, does this include the trees? Yes. Did a decision get made about what kind of trees are you still thinking We're still about that? kind of kicking that around a little bit. Um, the, the village will supply the trees and they'll plant the trees, oh. um, just like the village did last time. Um, we've been working with um, Nick and George over at the Glen and the Tree Committee, and we've come up with a list of several native uh, trees um, that we're considering. Uh, the sassafras, I think there is a, a smaller oak in there. Um, there are several on the list. Thanks. Um, and just to be clear, the, this is just on the east side of Xenia. It, it is on the east side from Dino's to Glen Street. Right, because the, the re resolution doesn't, I mean, it says Dino's to Glen Street, but it doesn't say east yeah. side. <laughs> It probably would be good to have um, maybe the specifications and then a, a little bit of a drawing. Um, and I mean, we're, it's fine for now. And then also schedule-wise, when do you expect the work to start? I'm going to issue the um, the notice to proceed to be dated September the 9th. Um, <laughs> Whether they begin immediately or not is up to them. They know they have to be off the streets by the 4th of October and can resume again after streetscape and that everything has to be passable and safe. And do you know if their intent is to say do a complete section at a time or are they going by trade? So they're going to do all the concrete sidewalk and then they're going to come back and do... We haven't had the pre-construction okay. meeting yet. But my thought would be that they would normally, they would normally lay all the concrete at one time. The fact that they have to be out of there for that that for period, period may change the way okay. they do that. 
Maybe could Karen go to that right. pre I would like to do that and also, you know, coordinate with the merchants. Obviously, that, that's always going to be an issue. Right. Is and, and this, getting in and out. And we were going to give them all notices as soon as we found out when they were going to start. Uh, Durst Brothers is the company that's doing Cemetery Street and also um, Limestone right now. So there was a little discussion about whether they would hold off and not start until after Street Fair. That may still be a possibility depending on where the schedule falls. Uh, it's not what I would choose first, but. And I'm, I'm, um, I'm kind of gathering with the scope of the work that it's possible that the water, that the Limestone Street water line project may not, may not be done by Street Fair. <coughs> no, that should still be done by Street Fair. Okay. okay. Yeah, that should still be done. Uh, we need to take a vote. Any any other questions or comments, citizens or council? Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And then finally, um, authorizing resolution 2014-45, authorizing the village manager to enter into an agreement with CNS Concrete Services LLC for Millsland Sidewalk. Okay, whereas the village is interested in making improvements to the Walnut Street sidewalk fronting Mills Lawn School, and whereas it is in the interest of the citizens of Yellow Springs to make such improvements, and whereas the village has caused specifications to be written and advertised for the for bids for the above work, all bid as a single project, and whereas after distributing said bid specifications to all interested parties and having reviewed two bids, an apparent lowest and best bid has been identified. Now, therefore, the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, does hereby resolve that. Section 1, the bid for making said improvements to the Mills Lawn sidewalks is hereby awarded to CNS Concrete Services, LLC of Springfield, Ohio. Section 2, the amount of the C CNS Concrete Services, LLC bid is $16,225. Section 3, the village manager is hereby authorized and directed to enter into a contract to construct the improvements as designed with CMS Concrete Services, LLC. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Um, I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. Any comments or questions? Anything you'd like to say? We received two bids again. One was from CNS and the other was from Durst Brothers. And in this case, CNS was lowest by just over a thousand dollars. And what about timeline on this project? Any? Um, they want to get it done uh, right away. If we sign the contracts later this week or the first part of next week, I think they would be starting very quickly. We'll definitely let the school know and work around whatever we have to for them. Great. And that should probably not be much longer than a week-long project. I wouldn't think so. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, now is the time <coughs> in the agenda where we... we have the oh, 46. Yeah, the extra. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we do. Um, resolution 2014-46. I'll let Judy read the whole thing. Do you want the whole thing or do you want just... Just read it by title since we've already... Okay. So this is amending resolution 2014-41 and certifying delinquent water, sewer, trash, and electric bills to the Auditor of Greene County, State of Ohio, for placement on the Greene County Tax Duplicate. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Um, Patty. Um, this morning, as Melissa was preparing to take the, um, the assessments down to uh, the Auditor's office, um, it dawned on everyone why there was the question about the electric being added onto the um, onto this list that we have. Um, and the reason was because the uh, previous resolution said water, sewer, garbage, and stormwater. Yeah. A and so. Yeah, that's what, <laughs> what it actually includes is water, sewer, and electric. We do not have a stormwater charge, uh, water, sewer, garbage, and electric. Um, it was something that um, legal had typed up for us and that we, it just went past all of us. <coughs> so this is simply amending the wording to have the correct utilities included. Okay, thanks. It went by us too, so. Mm -hmm. I looked at it and I'm like, oh, and well, I, we just all just a boilerplate. Yeah, and, and we I, were just, I was just looking for why electric wasn't there, so I didn't yeah. really read yeah. the sewer it, thing. It, it was in the dollar amounts that 
for the properties, but it wasn't in the body of the resolution. Right. Right. Okay. Any other comments, questions from council, citizens, comments, questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, now it's time for citizens' concerns for items that are not already on the agenda. Paul? And state your name and you have three minutes for comments. Paul Avendroth. This is related somewhat to an earlier item that you had on the agenda, and that is streets. <coughs> we have three types of streets in town. The Route 68, which is pretty much governed by the state of Ohio, residential streets, and a third category may be connector or a term like that. It's, it's the five or six streets which carry traffic through town. Corey Street is one of them. Dayton Street. Uh, uh, Limestone. Yeah, you know which ones. I think you should mark a center line on each of those streets that don't have it and mark parking such that cars parked on those streets do not force the vehicles to cross the double solid line. There's an area of Limestone Street near President where cars always park and I've seen accidents almost happen there several times because you cannot go west on that street without crossing the double line. There are other places in town and I think a rule like that or a policy would cover uh, what you were talking about earlier with Corey Street. You really have an unusual thing in town. Uh, the eastbound lane of Dayton Street is no parking except Sunday morning. So Sunday mornings traffic has to cross a double solid line for a couple hours. There was a time when before the double solid line when that those signs made sense. So you might consider that those signs are no longer appropriate for, as an example of using that policy. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Okay. Thanks. Any other citizen comments? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Anything else? Seeing and hearing none, we'll bring it back to council. We'll move on to um, old business, or yes, oh, special reports. We don't have any. We'll move on to old business. Um, first up is the budget schedule. And um, Melissa first presented this a couple of meetings ago. And I think the only question we had was what time um, we wanted to do the meetings. Um, Melissa feels that, that if we can start our meetings at 6, do the budget session um, prior to each of those meetings, then we still do have time if we need to schedule a special meeting, if we need to schedule a Saturday meeting after we do those initial sessions, we still do have time to do that. Mm -hmm. Is that, is everybody available at 6 o'clock on those meetings? Mm -hmm. I, think, I think I can. Make it manageable. Patty, is there anything you wanted to add? Is no, you, it, that's exactly what <coughs> Melissa said, that um, she felt that it could be accomplished the same way it was last year, mm -hmm. um, starting at 6 for these meetings, and she thought that would be plenty of time. So. And will the, um, will the supervisors be coming to? Okay. Thank you. Uh, that was easy. Um, next, we have an eGov update. Um, I'm not honestly sure who's going to do that. Probably Judy or Brian. Probably. We're going to kind of tag team. Okay. So Judy, I'll let you uh... off. <clears throat> okay, uh, Ruth Ann and I kind of put this together. Um, village supervisors participated in uh, these virtual meetings with, e with the eGov website developers on August 20th um, just to discuss web page content for each of the departments. Um, the overall goal for those is that villagers and, and visitors can easily access the information on about village utilities, streets, parks, pools, all of that kind of information in a, in a very transparent, easy to maneuver way. Um, <clears throat> the goal is to get a fast, easy way to disseminate information also that affects daily life. So if there's a street closure or a sewer main break or something of that nature that it's easily accessible. Um, the next step is for the eGov staff to provide sample pages and then each department can review those for content and appearance <clears throat> and also consistency among departments. 
Um, and then I'll actually let you take it from there because it's yeah really well I, I think Judy did a great job of summarizing but I want to underscore that you know part of the reason that we wanted to move to eGov when we talked about this way back when was that it allows our staff to directly update information um, it's a lot more efficient it gets the as Judy emphasized it gets out the information quickly uh, I think one of the most exciting pieces is the agenda builder tool, um, which allows both council's agenda and all our commissions. Uh, it builds it automatically based on whatever format the commission wants, and you can link documents to those particular topics. So for citizens or for us, if we just want to access, you know, the document that relates to eGov or that relates to whatever topic, we can grab that right away. We don't have to, uh, citizens won't have to print out the whole uh, packet. And so I think that's really neat. So commissions will have that. Uh, Judy will be doing that for council. And um, the only other thing I wanted to say is, uh, you know, obviously, uh, our users are citizens so we certainly invite any feedback as we're in this development stage from uh, residents or users about what they think would be helpful because we have some time to get it to where we want it to be well I think maybe we could um, once they start actually building the site maybe there's a way that we could allow s people to have access and and mm -hmm. start to, to work on it start to start to use it um, I also added um, they sent us a lot more information today this um, something that we're talking about is is you know having individual council pages so there's just going to be a lot more pages and it's very easy to build the page and so we were um, thinking of I mean this, these are a couple of options one would be just to have a single group council shot have us identified very simply with name um, email phone number whatever we want the other alternative is to go a little bit farther I think it would be nice to have the group shot then with a little explanation of council the council manager form of government but then we could each have our own page where we would have more of a portrait and then you can see in this oh this was on the table yeah, you sorry. can see in this questionnaire I mean more of a bio more of a history a little bit more contact information you know we don't have to decide now just think about it and you know Patty is looking at doing the same thing um, with supervisors and and that's the other thing we're talking about we will have more pictures of our staff um, so people will know who's coming to their house to read their meter or who's coming to fix their the leak in the street out front so it, it's really going to help I think connect the community and the citizens and um, I'm, I'm just very excited about um, just how easy it's going to be to input it I mean this this is painful I will tell you this process of getting to it is painful because they're asking us for all of this information so it's a big download of information these guys are are spending a lot of time Brian and I spent a couple of hours I sent him a bunch of photographs but it's you know there's a lot of material information that has to change hands and be migrated so it's going to be a challenge and uh, you may have said do you, did you say we're are we scheduling a photographer to come yeah I'm, I'm not sure idea, but we can and we can certainly make it at a time that's um, you know acceptable for all the council members even if it's you know for an hour before the meeting we kind of shuffle people in and out or something maybe yeah I think that would probably probably be the best time to do it yep any other questions okay um, next is council chambers upgrade um, I will turn that over to uh, Jerry and, and Brian also was at a meeting on Friday about the sound mm -hmm. uh, yes we <coughs> there were a couple of meetings and I think I missed a meeting today with uh, or did I not I, with, I didn't uh, have one you might have had one but I thought about when I was coming down looking at me <laughs> okay good because I know we, we wanted to meet with uh, Brian uh, Carlson if, if you missed it I missed, you it, missed too. it too okay. <laughs> anyway, um, as, as I kind of felt deep down that the, the big pull in the tent and the most expensive piece wouldn't be the uh, communications 
uh, system, the, the mics and speakers and so forth. Uh, we did have a gentleman come in from NVCC, if, mm -hmm. if I'm correct, and uh, why it was somewhat shocking the price that he price range that he gave us. It, it was in line with uh, three of the other quotes that I received on, on sound systems and so forth. Uh, myself and Brian plan on uh, going down to NVCC and see their setup and, and we'll probably visit a couple of the uh, other council chambers in the area to, to see how they handle uh, uh, sound and, and, and video and, and so forth. Um, and uh, we uh, also, I think at a later date, we're going to meet with Brian to get a, uh, a uh, see if we can agree upon some sketches that we can use to go out for uh, for bids on the. Uh, he's. I think he's going to email those. Okay. He's going to email those to uh, Jason. Okay. Good. And uh, so uh, it's. We're probably going to have to do it in phases. Uh, initially laying out the platform for where we're going to be and uh, uh, kind of lay out the, the carpet and uh, work from there. Uh, again, uh, the sound system being the, the biggest expense at, and not only for this council but for future councils and, and the citizens, uh, you know, we, we can't make a mistake on, on, on this one. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, probably spending a little bit more time than we thought, but I think it's important to, to make sure that we, we do have sound that uh, not only works here, but also works good for Channel 5 and, and our plans for uh, broadcasting over the internet and so forth. So, or, uh, it's, it's a little time consuming, but it's, to me it's exciting. To, to, and one of the comments that was made <coughs> but, uh, <coughs> from the gentleman from NVCC, uh, we are probably an, an innovator uh, as it, when it comes to uh, council chambers and providing the best possible for a community of our size, uh, as you can, we compare it to some of the larger communities. Um, their councils and probably aren't as concerned as we are about making sure that we reach uh, all of our, our citizens and, and that uh, they can interact with us and so forth. So he was very impressed in, in that fact that uh, we are probably the only council of our size that uh, is forward thinking and, and uh, understands where we need to be five, 10, 15 years from now. Thank you. Uh, no, I, that's perfect. Thanks, Jerry. Okay. Uh, next item of business and new business is just introducing the topic of charter review. I believe we may have talked about this at the retreat that we had. Um, every Every eight, seven, eight to ten years, um, it's advisable for us to look at our charter. Um, the thing that happened last time, I think the last time we did it was in 2006 or 2007. What happened at that point, that was predicated by John Chambers because state law was not keeping up with our charter. So we had a number of provisions in our charter that actually were against <laughs> state law. Um, and then there are just other things that, that we may want to review um, that are covered by the Charter. I mean, one thing that, that uh, is up, I think, uh, for discussion is there, one of the provisions in our Charter is, is that we have a Township Representative on Planning Commission. Um, the last time we actually had a Charter review, that was recommended to be changed. Um, and I think we may want to revisit that. So it's basically just looking at, at the charter that governs our, our um, how, how the village is governed, and we need to do it every few years. Um, Judy and Patty did a laid out, you know, just kind of the steps. The first thing we need to do is to um, 
get a commission together, a charter review commission. This needs to be a pretty specific and, and, and uh, uh, body. I mean, it, it, it's good to have people that are familiar with government, familiar with the law. So um, uh, this would need to be a pretty specific commission. Um, we need to decide on the size. Um, it would also include, I would say, one to two council members. It will include um, the village solicitor, um, the manager, that's all beyond the clerk. Um, that's all beyond the the, the citizen um, committee, which I would say maybe maybe at least five citizens. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I would think that would be a good number, and then two council members. Mm -hmm. Sounds so. So um, I mean, my thoughts are to just um, as far as as you know, and, and then if you see down below. Um, the possibility of trying to get this on because for those of you who don't know charter amendments have to go on the ballot mm -hmm. so they have to be voted on so you know it's something that we would tie to an election um, this this particular schedule would be for a November 2015 election um, I think that that makes some sense. These are some, you know, some pretty significant changes. I think at first I was a little, I was a little concerned that it would be during a council election year, but I don't think that's that important. I think making sure that it gets done with the council who proposed the amendments, I think, is more important. So I think getting it done by November or getting it done by August so it can get onto the ballot for November, I think, is is important. So um, that's why I'd like to just ask Judy to put a uh, put an ad in the paper just mm -hmm. requesting um, members for a Charter Review Commission definitely and then so just to clarify um, the third point here about uh, an application for this process so you guys are talking about an application that interested yeah that, that's one out. of the methods that council can use I think Judy had someone that emailed you what they actually have an application that they use for this yeah I gathered some information from other clerks and there are a few methods of going about this that I mean each community does it a little bit differently some communities have each council person actually select an individual um, for the committee there are a couple who had um, specific applications and I have examples of those well could we so could we combine the second and third option so you know put out the you know advertisement but also have an application <coughs> I, mean, it's, I don't see why not. I mean, I mean, it seems like a good idea given that we need that specialized. Well, if you, I mean, do you have, you don't happen to have one of the application with you. I mean, mm -hmm. if there was a way, I mean, I mean, to me that it's more about the qualifications and, and that can be, to me, that can be parsed out in, just in, in the letter of interest. I mean, people can state their it might be helpful to guide people a little bit though ask them you know well, I was going to say we can make the ad say please state specific qualifications like I've done charter review in the past or I have a degree in law or I have a degree in okay. political science or okay you know something like that we can you know ask them or we can have a separate list of questions as okay. opposed to a full application sounds good so, okay. I, we, we, I read here another method is letters of interest and qualifications. Do we have specific qualifications that we want from the individuals that the have? Char or? The charter has, the charter is very mute on the point of exactly how to go about this. So if council wants to come up with a list of, you know, we would like the people to have been a resident of the village for X period of time. Um, we would like them to have uh, a, a, an associate's degree or higher, and, you know, whatever. If you want to have that in the um, in the ad that goes out, we can certainly do that. Um, the only reason I bring that up because you know you, you got two here and one's got this and one's got that, and someone right. says, "Well, how did you pick?" And, right. You know, yeah. I, I, but we're also, I mean, yeah. that's kind of the situation we're in for all of our commissions, though. Um, but I think this one's a little bit more important. Yeah. Important well, it's because it, you know, whatever we do has to go on a ballot for voters. What? If uh, I understand. It, so. 
I mean, council could, each council member could perhaps send some suggestions to either Judy or myself. We can draft something and bring it to the next meeting for review and put it in after that. I think we have time to do that. As far as suggestions for requirements? Correct. or okay. Could, yeah. could uh, Judy, could you send out mm -hmm. one or more of these? Yeah. Uh, samples of the qualification and, and then everyone can can forward a, a list to Judy and myself and we'll put our heads together and draft something and so then we'll have it at the next meeting yeah. oh I think that that's that that's more great. than enough mm -hmm. time yeah that's you great. might want to set to like a minimum and a maximum because if you find that you have three very qualified candidates and you might have 12 others but you don't feel that they're really qualified that you don't state I've, we've got to have five people or we don't move forward just some language to that effect but patty and i can work on that okay yeah okay i agree because the, the the charter doesn't even specify how nope. big the committee it the charter specifies doesn't. that there has to be a commission the charter uh, the amendment section of the charter says there has to be a commission to review the charter uh and make the recommendations to go to the vote but it doesn't that's essentially it all it says okay great Okay. Uh, manager's report. All right. Uh, the first thing is a fun thing. Over here, you will see Joe's award. Joe's very proud of this award, and he should be. <laughs> yes. um, they have done a, a, an incredible job maintaining um, safety um, out at the uh, at the reclama water reclamation facility, and um, this is actually a pretty big deal. Um, it is a national award and one per state is given out every year wow. and this year our facility and our crew wow. was chosen to receive this for the state of Ohio and uh, that's really amazing so it is over here. here it's a very nice award um, and it was given at the banquet last uh, Thursday night and and Joe is very very excited about it so um, you might want to if you uh, get a chance uh, congratulate Joe and his and his team out there on uh, that wonderful safety record that they have maintained um, because that, I mean that saves us as a village <laughs> uh, a lot of money and premiums and all that and to have this recognition is is pretty incredible okay. should we do something public I mean uh, yeah at, at a meeting like, it feels like it and definitely a, a letter to them mm -hmm. you know sort of saying I am I'm sure that Joe and, and maybe his crew would be happy to oh come. I'd love for them to come maybe we can work it into the next yeah. meeting. all right some, excellent some kind yeah. of a yeah. okay um, we are still working on the alternatives for the trash cans. We're going to bring some. Uh, I have spoken with um, Beth, Beth Holyoke and, Kate. and um, Katie is it Seidel. 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 And um, they are going to present a proposal that I'm going to take to uh, the Public Arts Commission along with some other alternatives on um, new trash cans or the, the comparison to the liners. And then um, the Public Arts Commission will be making a recommendation to council. Um, I did ask Jason Hamby to go ahead and install the, uh, the flow-through device out at the glass farm. Um, we're going to move forward with that. I don't, unless he did it today, I don't think he's gotten it done because I just told him that last Thursday, was it, I think, Marianne, mm -hmm. the day that I spoke to you about mm -hmm. I'm not sure what I, I think it was Thursday and I know we didn't get it done Friday um, but they are going to go ahead and do that and then we'll just monitor that and if we have to make adjustments in the height we can do that but um, we're going to move forward with it um, we went over the electric uh, safe routes to school um, before uh, long before I came um, the village had put in for a grant uh, along with the, a citizen committee for safe routes to school. They did get the grant. There have been some issues um, working through the grant with ODOT and the, the dollar amounts gotten pared down uh, quite a bit. Hmm. I spoke to ODOT and got them to actually commit a little bit more money. Uh, and we are going to be doing some sidewalks. Yes, Lori, more money. <laughs> But, Law for you. Thank you. <laughs> um, we're actually going to go to a, a meeting at ODOT, Jason and I, on the 17th of September. Um, they are going to be installing sidewalks along the south side of Yellow Springs Fairfield from Fair Acres to Winter Street. Is it Winter Street? Fair Acres to... Yes, Winter Street. 
if you go east two streets that's winter street right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then down winter street or down winter street to where the sidewalk currently exists on pleasant at pleasant just south of pleasant they're going to connect that whole thing and the village is going to do a small section from fair acres uh, west to king street so there will be a sidewalk from King Street down to Winter and then down Winter to connect to Pleasant, at Pleasant. And that is going to get done with that money. Um, ODOT has actually committed a little bit more money to make the whole Winter Street thing connect. And that's gonna be on the south side also? Um, it'll be on the south side of Yellow Springs Fairfield to Winter Street and then it'll be on the east side of Winter down to, to Pleasant. I think it's just north. No, I'm of talking Pleasant. about from Cape, from uh, Fair Acres up to King Street. It'll be, it'll be connected to where ODOT starts theirs. So we're going to just take it to the corner. Not to is that Stafford? That's Stafford. It's like a, ha a, a half a block. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, Stafford. Oh, so Stafford. I was just, yeah. I, okay. I thought you were going yeah. the other. No, already. we're just oh, taking okay. it to okay. the corner because they're starting kind of in the middle. Right. Because there's that crosswalk at Fair Acres. Right. That's so. where ODOT starting. Right. And we're going to take it from there to Stafford to the corner so that that whole block will be done. So is there is there going to be signage then? I mean, are, are there going to be crosswalk there's lighted a, crosswalks and there there's we're, we're still discussing the signage with ODOT. We want it to be something that definitely catches people's eye. Um, so that they are aware that number one, there are two crosswalks, or you know, there's a crosswalk there. And number two, that you know, it, it, we want it to be just very visible. But uh, we've had a couple of different discussions about whether it's going to be a lighted one, or ODOT has some new ones, and they're not lighted, but they're a different shape. Mm -hmm. They're like a long rectangular shape, and they tend to be, for some reason, more visible than the great big ones. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that we're still in discussions with and we're working with the Safe Routes to School Committee on that. And that's well. taking all of our money? Actually, we don't have to put in any money except for our little stretch mm -hmm. from Fair okay. Acres to but, Stafford. But, I mean, there, there were, I mean, I the the sites of what all was going to be done at one point right. with right. <laughs> that money was huge right so. well uh, ODOT is going to do all of that on ODOT money okay and then we're going to cool. take our money and do some preliminary engineering for the limestone street section to apply in January for another grant okay, okay. great um, and the last thing that we have to discuss is the Miller well, Fellow. I'm, I'm sorry just before so the the sidewalks that we're talking about for phase one mm -hmm. that's still going to happen next year or I'm hoping that they get them in this fall. Really? Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, because the ODOT wants to get the project done because they want me to stop bothering them. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yes, I'm hoping it gets done this fall. Um, the Miller Fellows, um, you have Paul's letter, and essentially, um, when the village took on uh, Miller Fellow the first time, uh, the agreement was that it not cost the village anything and to that end not only the um, students portion of PERS comes out of their check but the village portion of PERS comes out of their check which PERS being the retirement system the student can apply to get their portion back they can take that out but they don't get the village portion so essentially by taking the village portion out of their check it's reducing their overall um, hourly wage. Um, Paul came to me and asked if that could be altered. Um, since it was a decision of council originally, it needs to be a decision of council to alter it. It would cost, now that we have two Miller Fellows, because we have one for the PAC for and, HRC. and one for HRC, um, it's about $250 a year per student. So it would be essentially $500 a year for two Miller Fellows for the village to pay that portion of OPERS and it not be taken out of the um, student's check. And just to give a little bit more background, because I did some research on this since uh, it's for CAP and for HRC that we have the Miller Fellows. So uh, all the other nonprofits take out Social Security, which is 6.2%. Yeah, 6 mm -hmm. um, the 10% that is taken out from the employee side plus 14% is what the village usually matches. Um, now, since they can get that 10% back, 
basically what we're talking about is a gap of 7.8 percent um, that uh, above what other Miller fellows uh, have taken out of their checks. Um, so I, I mean ultimately that's what we're looking at. As Patty said, the 10 percent uh, they can decide to after they are not employed with the village they can get all that back. They can of course keep all 24 percent in a retirement fund just like with Social Security. Um, so they, they don't lose that, but, but that is the difference that we're talking about. Right. But they, they will get that money, won't they? Won't they get that 14% at some point? They have to, I think they actually have to become vested in the system to get that back, which is, it used to be five, I'm not sure what it is now because they keep changing it. Um, and, and I think that if they don't have that vested time in, they will never get that back. Okay. So unless they're choosing to continue in public service. In the state of Ohio. In the state of mm -hmm. Ohio, then they're not mm -hmm. going to get that back. Mm -hmm. But I do have the contracts for both Miller Fellows on my desk, and um, I can't sign them until council makes a decision. Well, I, I would be in favor of doing whatever we need to do so that our Miller fellows get the same benefits that others and if it's five hundred dollars for two that five two hundred and fifty is going to make a lot more difference to those students than it is to our budget and we get a lot of value out of the students um, I think I agree with Marianne at least um, it this is the kind of thing I wasn't I wasn't sure we were going to be voting on this so normally I would say I like to think about it but I also don't want to delay their paycheck so uh, I, I would I would uh, endorse what Marianne just said I guess specifically I would want it to be that 7.8 percent that makes them equal to I don't think you're going to be able to do that really um, yeah just because it's going to be an accounting nightmare to try to figure mm. that out Okay. Um, because it, the the system automatically withholds what we tell it to as a whole. I mean, it withholds this much for the village and this much out of the students, but in this case, it just both get deducted from the same paycheck. But I don't think you can split the fourteen percent into seven point eight and you know mm. the other. So are so are you saying that our Miller fellows will now be making more money than? <laughs> than the other students? Yes. <sighs> oh, boy. By, by what? By what? Not a lot. No. 200, 250 bucks. Well, maybe it, less than the, that. That's oh. the 14%. Less than that. Yeah. It's, it's only a portion of that 250. Right. It's about half of that. Yeah. Well, OK. Can we ask them to give that money back to us? You can ask them. I don't know if you can make them. <laughs> ask the students to give the money back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's more. Does 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 the community foundation realize that that's going to be the situation? That those two students are actually going to be making more now? No, this came from Paul. It um, didn't really come from them. <coughs> and Paul shook his head. So I, I guess that means no. You know, I I'm, I support it. I think that's fine. I just. Um, I think that's fine. Yeah, unfortunately, this just came up last Thursday, Paul, or Wednesday. But it also, it, it's also the way life is, though. I mean, you work for a government agency, and, and there are gives and takes when you work for the government. So, you know, you're, so it's, it's preparing them for life. But <laughs> <laughs> whatever me, but I, I support it. I think, I mean, it's, it's silly to, to argue over that little amount of money but um, it's too bad it has to be this complicated and just to clarify we cannot uh, unlike elected officials who can choose Social Security we cannot right. choose that for for our interns yeah. so and they have to go be under purse so. right and I can ask Melissa if she can do the 7.2 you know versus the okay uh, but I don't believe that the ego of accounting system is going to let you do that. Okay. Okay. Is um, there, so let's do we? Like, well, should, we should do a motion. We should have. I, I, yeah, I'm not sure how it originally was, so I think a motion would probably be. Brian, do you? Uh, yes, yeah, so I make uh, a motion to uh, cover 
7.8 or 14%, depending on what can work out. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Judy? Mm. Okay, just that it's been, it's been a productive few weeks uh, getting the ballot language approved. EGOV is churning along. Um, we had an excellent Records Commission meeting, uh, which resulted in an update to the RC2, which will then help the Finance Department properly destroy a number, a large number, of boxes no, of no longer needed materials. And I did get an email back from um, the Ohio Historical Society today saying what I had submitted to them was good, and they're putting it through to their committee, so that should not take too much longer. Um, and just a word to everyone that the Secretary of State's office holds periodic Sunshine Law trainings and just always a great idea to encourage any Border Commission members who haven't actually gone and taken a training to jump in there because it it's, doesn't cost money and is generally very close. The ones that are listed right now are a little far afield, but uh, by spring they'll have them. There's one in Fairborn uh, and they're very close by. So. Judy. I think that would be a great idea to mm -hmm. allow our board and commission members to know that exists. Right. I yeah. think it would be good, uh, Judy. Maybe um, as you, s if if you could kind of monitor that and let us know when the when the ones that are really in the area, you know, like say within thirty miles of here, mm -hmm. um, that would be good. Sure. Yep. Okay. And for the most part, those trainings are free, right? Yeah, they're free. Uh -huh. Our tax dollars at work. I was going to say, I think the Secretary of State's very interested in Sunshine Law, so yeah. Yeah, maybe we could host one even. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. we could host a training session here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe once we get the uh, yeah. chambers upgrade. Yeah, I mean, uh, those other places have some pretty good. Yeah, Fairborn's is really nice. Set up, yeah. Uh, Next, uh, future agenda items. Um, at the next meeting, we have on the agenda the street musician agreement, um, the RFQ, water plant RFQ. I think we have a meeting this Twelve. this week or no, next yes, week next to week. to review those. <laughs> and then an update on the, um, a discussion on the community policing forum that will come out of the HRC meeting. Um, anything else, I guess we'll have, oh, we'll have the, uh, Parking, um, parking ordinance regarding parking. Mm -hmm. um, we are hoping to have uh, a resolution ready to put out the RFP for the skate park oh, yeah. by the fifteenth. I have a couple things that I'd like to bring up as potential future agenda items. One is the um, is it the CETA agreement with uh, Miami Township. Mm -hmm. The that uh, I remember when we were initially talking about the CBE, um, I went through that agreement, which is supposed to be reviewed every 10 years, and it's past the 10-year date. And uh, it was like done in 2002 or something, I think. So it seems to me that it would be good to review and reapprove or whatever that agreement with the township. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it seems like maybe um, if we could maybe have a discussion and then um, have a meeting with the township. I mean, we haven't had a meeting with the township in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, we, so we would have to have a joint meeting in order to have the discussion. And we might be able to also bring in the uh, uh, school board. I guess we're on our goals. That's one of the things listed is to have a meeting with all three. And I mean that CETA does kind of relate to the schools. It might be might better to have a school board separate. Although I don't know what would we. I think it would depend upon how you know how detailed mm -hmm. the CETA discussion would get. Mm -hmm. um, the the other uh, item is um, a review of the zoning code. Now, I assume this would first happen with Planning Commission, but as I recall, what we said is that at the end of a, the first year, the zoning code would be reviewed and any items that had come up, and I know that at least there's one uh, revolving. Oh, no, there's, there's a yeah. big, More than big one. packet. So 
So I guess my question to you, Lori, is has a date been set to review the? No. Um, I'd like to make a suggestion of waiting until we get the new assistant village manager in on board. That's um, since that person's going to be working in with the planning and zoning code, it might be good to have them on board for the review, and that way they kind of understand where the commission's coming from. I think that's a good idea. Um, yeah, the planning commission hasn't met, and um, I think we're not going to meet. Are we going to meet later this month? I know we're not going to meet this month. No, it moves all the way to October. All the way to October, so yep. we won't be meeting until October. Um, and uh, the the last meetings were, ta were taken up with the solar discussion, so it's um, this will be something we want to um, maybe put uh, on the agenda, at least as a discussion item mm -hmm. for planning. And would the process be that um, uh, planning commission review and then would it come to council? To They'll make a recommendation. Planning commission, very, it'll end up, I would suspect it'll be very similar to the zoning code itself. Mm -hmm. Um, and it'll be great to have a staff person because it is going to be a complex. Yeah, there's a lot of things complex. to to look at because there is so much. <laughs> My um, understanding is that there is a lot that's yep. going to be included. So there it might be. not happen. The, oh, it's the end result might not happen it, by the end I'm, of this year. Oh, it won't. No, it will not. No, I can guarantee that. Okay. I mean, we're not even meeting until October, and we've got a we've yeah. got some other I mean, stuff on the agenda for that meeting. Tamara has so. been keeping a, a book of yes. stuff that Stephen Anderson just yes. you know that she comes across every time somebody comes in to talk to her. I think something comes up practically okay. every yeah. time. Uh, so. is it the Sutton Farm. Uh, yes. Do we need to have more discussions mm -hmm. on that, or it's the RFQ is out, okay. or the RFP is out? Didn't yeah. Okay. okay. Is out. And did did you want to put something on to maybe give a little shout out to Joe? Oh Wayne yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. um, should we do a resolution? Can we write a nice resolution? Sure. Mm -hmm. Would it be appropriate to have the mayor do something? I don't know if it's just if it's that kind of a thing. I think it's more appropriate, appropriate for council, council yeah. Because there are employees. Okay. Yeah, Joe Bates. Okay. Well I'll work on that with Judy and Patty. Okay. Um, anything else? And then we well and then our first meeting in October, we start the budget, so that's mm -hmm. that's going to take up some time too. So, uh, okay, well, I maybe um, for the Joe thing, maybe uh, maybe if maybe some artists in town would be willing to help brainstorm on something to do a, a little mural or something. I don't know. You know, he's done so much to make it colorful out there. I <laughs> uh, you know I don't know. I just well, you it, know what would be just having somebody do a. Well, hi, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Talking don't about surprise, Joe. Like Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. 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 Trying to plan a surprise in a public meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the computer. Don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I thought we'll uh, we'll figure something. Yeah. Okay. Obviously. Cool. Well, okay. Yeah, I'd be willing to talk to some folks. I was just—I mean, maybe something that highlights just how cool the water treatment plant looks. So. Okay. Well, we have yeah. a lovely. So I know right. we got the nice aerial view there. Right. <laughs> the aerial view doesn't quite do it justice. It doesn't, it doesn't really. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, okay. Um, we have an executive session. If I could get a motion um, to go into executive session regarding the hiring of a public official. I move. Second. Okay. Wintrum. Yes. Askland. Yep. Sims. Yes. Housh. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Could we have a quick break between? We can. Awesome. We could even have a little bit longer break. <laughs> 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 the schedule is looking